Hello, everyone. My name is Zoltan Nagy, uh, and I'm a professor in the Davidson School of Chemical Engineering at uh, Purdue University, USA. My uh, research mainly focuses in the development of uh, process intensification and advanced process control approaches in the manufacturing of fine chemical, food, pharmaceutical, and energetic compounds with special focus on the development of um, uh, particulate, uh, uh, particulate products. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, concepts of uh, smart manufacturing applied in pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing. So as I mentioned, uh, the use of smart manufacturing of pharmaceuticals can provide a significant enhancement in the uh, way in which we uh, develop uh, uh, pharmaceutical compounds and therefore can have a large societal impact by bringing pharmaceuticals faster to the patient and at a lower cost. If you look at the general development phases for pharmaceutical compounds, there are many important steps which need to be uh, followed in a sequential way before we can take a, uh, a drug from um, uh, discovery to the manufacturing. Uh, first, we start by generating the hypothesis uh, how a particular chemical structure may interact with a disease and therefore provide the potential beneficial effect, a cure. Uh, then, of course, the uh, target needs to be identified and validated, uh, some assay developed, uh, and then generate uh, some lead compounds, which can then go into the clinical trials. Then during the development phase, we need to perform some optimization uh, to design the human dose, going into then um, the phases for clinical uh, uh, trials, then submission, the global launch, and of course, after that, the global optimization before the actual launch happens. During these phases, of course, from discovery development, we have a large part where manufacturing becomes a critical step uh, to make uh, the uh, cost efficient uh, uh, manufacturing of the pharmaceutical compound. Because of the complexity of developing a, um, a pharmaceutical compound uh, and bringing it into a product scale, uh, there is a very large erosion from the discovery phase. You can see that, that during the discovery, they may start with between five and 10,000 compounds, where uh, during the phase of uh, preclinical and clinical trials, it reduces very quickly to a small number to obtain eventually approved uh, API uh, or a single API. So very often, we start from 5,000 to 10,000 candidates for each successful drug which ends up on, on the market and this entire process going through these sequential complex stages from discovery to product on the market can take a significant amount of time, which is often at the range of 15 years, uh, can even be at the range of 15 years, uh, which automatically means that since the patent life of a drug is 20 years, the duration within which we can actually generate uh, uh, revenue in a pharmaceutical context can be uh, very short if we, the uh, uh, development phase is not accelerated. There is a huge impact on how manufacturing can then um, enhance the uh, or, or accelerate this, this phase and also decrease the cost of the overall manufacturing um, uh, for the pharmaceutical. Um, and we look at this breakout uh, of, of um, uh, of the cost distribution related to the development of a pharmaceutical compound, we can see that a significant amount, approximately 30% of the overall cost is related to the manufacturing. This can be even much higher in the case of generic compounds where the R&D development is typically not that large since the molecule is already uh, have proven uh, a therapeutical effect, uh, but even uh, the range of 30, 27, 30% is already a significant proportion which can be influenced significantly by applying smart manufacturing and process intensification uh, concepts. Despite all the uh, potential economic impact of using advanced uh, manufacturing technologies in the pharmaceutical uh, context, there has been relatively little 
uh, improvement in the manufacturing steps in pharmaceutical industry. If you look at the other industries, for example, consumer products, um, this has been amazing, right? So going from um, this to the smartphones in 100 years is a huge uh, change in uh, how we uh, create the manufacturing uh, process or in the product. Whereas if you look at the pharmaceutical, the change is actually not that dramatic, right? So we are using pretty much similar unit operations and sim similar steps of man manufacturing as we have used a, a hundred years ago. This also uh, uh, further um, uh, emphasized by the fact that the pharmaceutical manufacturing uh, processes typically were developed by pharmacists and chemists who started developing the active ingredient at small scale in the lab. And then as uh, in an ad hoc way, they, uh, there was an increase in the uh, 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 scaling up the uh, quantities um, of the pharmaceuticals. Uh, these manufacturing processes have not uh, undergone rigorous chemical engineering scale up processes. Uh, which have led to significantly suboptimal manufacturing uh, uh, processes. All this can lead to uh, the requirement of implementing advanced control strategies, which are also further motivated by the specific uh, features of the pharmaceutical processes, where we have a number of challenges which are relatively specific to the uh, pharma industry. We have definitely have cost challenges because uh, we typically have large variation in product pipeline. Uh, there is a downward pressure by healthcare providers who tend to prefer the uh, um, supporting the lower cost uh, drugs on the insurance uh, schemes. And of course, the uh, emerging markets are growing substantially where patients often are unable to afford large uh, costs of the uh, medica medication. While we have to uh, also fulfill process challenges that are related to the lack of real-time measurements, lack of models, and lack of actuators. Uh, and we have specific regulatory challenges, which are very specific to the pharmaceutical industries, which are related to quality assurance, process validation, continuous verification, as well as safety of product, as well as the processes. So in order to try to address these challenges, over the years, several uh, frameworks have been developed, starting from the uh, traditional quality by testing uh, framework where uh, quality was tested into the product to the currently well accepted quality by, quality by design uh, concept where systematic experimental design frameworks are used to identify design spaces within the, in which we can operate the, the process to guarantee that our products will be at the desired target critical quality attributes. And more recently, we have been working on uh, introducing an even more novel concept based on quality by control, where we are directly using in-situ process analytical technologies to measure uh, an array of critical quality attributes of the product, and then use these directly in-situ, online, and real-time measured critical quality attributes to automatically change the operating conditions of the process so that we can drive the process to make sure that the quality is achieved for the final, um, uh, final product. This framework, what we call the quality by control, heavily relies on the use of in-situ process analytical technologies and can also uh, exploit the uh, use of digital twins and digital design uh, concepts to ultimately implement what we call a smart manufacturing framework uh, in the pharmaceutical um, uh, context. Um, in addition to this, if you look at the distribution of uh, pharmaceuticals in the overall uh, chemical industries, we can see that it actually represents uh, approximately 50% of um, the fine chemical industry. So uh, typically overall globally, it's a very significant uh, market. Uh, and in particularly, then if you look at uh, you know, in more detail, what type of products we are manufacturing within this sector, you can see that 80% of the substances uh, generally developed as fine chemicals are isolated in solid form uh, during the, the manufacturing process. Therefore, crystallization, it becomes a really a key unit operation, which 
uh, has a strong impact on the overall efficiency of the manufacturing process. Uh, so this is just an example now. I'm going to show some examples uh, how we can uh, use now some of the smart manufacturing concepts in order to um, uh, enhance manufacturability of a variety of pharmaceutical compound. And this is just a general slide where we show how in-situ process analytical technologies can be used to understand the crystallization process. And this slide, we have a crystallizer where we have an array of different uh, tools which measure, measure in situ properties of the crystals, properties of the liquid and solid phase, uh, simultaneously see, feeding that into a monitoring and control uh, uh, framework that we call a, a crystallization process informatic system, which takes all these uh, uh, PAT information into account and then provide a automated intelligent decision support and uh, feedback control approach which will then adapt the uh, operating conditions of the uh, unit operation, in this case, the crystallizer, to drive the process to produce crystals of desired uh, critical uh, quality attributes. Uh, so this is just shows an example here on the right-hand side, how we applied the quality by control framework to uh, on a large scale manufacturing at uh, uh, UK, a pharmaceutical uh, company, uh, AstraZeneca, where an array of PAT tools uh, were implemented and a feedback control was then um, used to drive the crystallization process and enhance the uh, product quality from this uh, clearly broad size distribution in this, uh, uh, this figure, which has much better manufacturability uh, properties and decreases the uh, uh, duration of the crystallization as well as the subsequent uh, isolation, filtration, drying uh, uh, processes, enabling uh, faster manufacturability, manufacturing of the, of the active ingredient. Uh, applying the same uh, uh, concept for another uh, pharmaceutical compound is shown here. So this was an AstraZeneca drug where we practically implemented the same feedback control approach, which automatically generated temperature cycles in the crystallizer and eliminated the problems which were related to creating these agglomerates, which automatically uh, um, led to a um, larger amount of solvent inclusion in the product, which we, when it was evaporated, then led to impurities as well in the system. Uh, we obtained these much better controlled uh, particles without agglomeration and therefore a much higher purity uh, for the system in a significantly smaller number of um, experiments. So the development by using the quality by control framework and smart manufacturing led to no agglomeration, no solvent inclusion, a much better size uniformity and aspect ratio of course, significant enhancement in the purity with uh, uh, a significant uh, improvement in the uh, development time from two to three months to two to three days in this case. The second example that I uh, want to show is related to the use of uh, smart manufacturing concepts where we are using now digital design uh, framework and digital design uh, concept uh, to um, uh, develop end-to-end uh, -end optimal manufacturing processes. The key idea behind this is uh, that we represent the entire drug manufacturing process, which has all the step, typical steps, API uh, synthesis, uh, workup, uh, 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 purification, um, um, and isolation and drying, uh, which is then sent to the drug product manufacturing. We, we, take, uh, we develop uh, unit operation models for each of these uh, uh, steps and represent digital designs this is digital twins of the manufacturing system where we can consider for each of the steps batch and continuous manufacturing routes. And this enables us to construct fully end-to-end -end continuous, end-to-end -end batch or hybrid manufacturing uh, alternatives and compare them by doing a techno-economic uh, analysis of the, uh, of the different uh, flow sheet alternatives. Our frameworks then allows to provide a uh, automated framework to generate these potential flow sheet alternatives, incorporating some um, uh, uh, know-how and knowledge about uh, how the unit operation needs to be sequenced, uh, then to performing a selection of the uh, large number of uh, potential process uh, flow diagram, uh, candidates performing optimization, uh, uh, overall global optimization of the overall manufacturing steps, and then comparing based on operating and capital expenditures, these 
different alternatives to really see depending on the value of the pharmaceutical as well as the volume of manufacturing what process flow diagram process alternative and and the type of manufacturing batch continuous or hybrid is the most appropriate for to achieve uh, the highest uh, um, economic revenue for the particulate process so in this case for example we applied this uh, framework um, that we developed on the uh, pythonic um, uh, uh, framework what we call pharma pi um, for the cancer chemotherapy drug lomustin where we generated uh, for example three different alternatives a batch hybrid and continuous uh, flow diagram we have a two-step reaction we have a, a, a vaporization to concentrate the reaction mixture to be able to perform crystallization and then we have filtration and drying at the end to produce the pure solid uh, API, which then goes to formulation. Looking at the different alternatives, so batch, hybrid, uh, continuous, and we uh, compare different continuous uh, process flow alternatives, we can see that as we increase the uh, volume of manufacturing, the uh, operating costs of the different alternatives becomes, uh, uh, become, becomes uh, different. And generally speaking, as we go from a, a small scale manufacturing to a larger scale, the hybrid uh, operating mode becomes the most uh, cost effective um, uh, in, in general. This is also true in terms of uh, operating costs per unit product, as well as the total operating costs during the entire manufacturing um, uh, steps. So with this generalized framework where we can practically now create a digital twin of an end-to-end -end manufacturing system, we can investigate a particular uh, manufacturing route uh, uh, and optimized to achieve maximum um, uh, economic impact and shortened uh, development time uh, for bringing the drug uh, to market. Of course, this also enables us now to address another important uh, uh, challenge these days uh, related to um, 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 uh, for pharmaceutical manufacturing, which is if you look at the typical steps of synthesis, purification, formulation, and drug product, we, we, we have multiple steps which uh, require now a, a complex supply chain uh, to uh, eventually bring the, 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 the product to the patient. So we typically have to take the precursors or raw materials to the drug substance manufacturing uh, that is then stored and shipped to drug product manufacturing, which often actually happens on different continents. Uh, which again are stored and shipped to the uh, pharmacies to deliver to the to the patients. Of course, when there are certain disruptions related to a pandemic or war or other disruptions, these can uh, significantly um, disrupt the, this, this complex distribution chain and therefore can uh, lead to uh, slow and inflexible healthcare systems to bring the drug to the patients and also can uh, create large expired uh, stocks which eventually can end up in the environment as uh, as uh, pollutions uh, uh, and of un uh, uh, because of unused waste uh, uh, chemicals or pharmaceuticals, the idea that we can uh, uh, implement is related to the distributed manufacturing of pharmaceuticals, where instead of having this complex supply chain and cent centralized manufacturing uh, uh, facilities, we can develop small-scale distributed manufacturing uh, platforms, which can be distributed. Uh, 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 in, in the region geographically, and then uh, performed at the uh, the manufacturing at the at, at 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 the place where the use has to be done. This allows uh, a much shorter and robust supply chain, which can be very robust in uh, the case of pandemics or or war created disruptions. It also can minimize the waste generated because we can practically perform manufacturing on demand. Uh, of course, this supports now novel technologies such as personalized uh, medication, uh, really developing their required dosage uh, specific to the patient, which can also decrease the um, decrease um, uh, pollution, pharmaceutical pollution, because we are not overdosing the patient, therefore providing a safe, safer treatment and also less byproduct via elimination, which ends up in the uh, environment. Of course, these uh, distributed uh, small-scale manufacturing uh, supply chain structures can be enabled by generating small-scale manufacturing, so going from large centralized facilities 
to small modular manufacturing platforms, uh, uh, which can also be achieved inherently by doing end-to-end -end continuous processing, which inherently uh, is a process intensification framework that enables now to generate smaller scale manufacturing uh, uh, plants. Of course, this also requires now real-time quality assurance enabled by the use of uh, process analytical technology uh, tools and also other um, uh, uh, advanced technologies such as 3D printing uh, incorporated in these mini plants. Uh, by this, one can design uh, uh, a geographically distributed uh, manufacturing platforms, as shown in this uh, particular slide, where we can use novel uh, unit operation, novel reaction or separation uh, uh, technologies, modular small-scale manufacturing, uh, personalization, where we also use the pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamic model to identify what is the appropriate dosage regimen, which can be uh, optimized for a particular patient, and then use this in a geographically distributed framework so that we can uh, bring the manufacturing as close as possible to the, to the patient. This example shows the Lomustin mini plant uh, that, uh, that I just showed uh, in the previous or introduced the case study in the previous uh, case, where we have uh, synthesis, uh, a solvent switch uh, uh, distillation, crystallization, a three-phase uh, separation of the, of, the, of the solid to uh, um, uh, introduce this, uh, create a formulation that can be uh, introduced in the capsule. And then we are using a drop on demand printing technology to create personalized doses. This drop on demand technology is illustrated uh, here where on the particular uh, uh, platform, where by per performing appropriate control uh, during the deposition now these droplets and control the crystallization between the doses um, as well as within the doses. Uh, we printed smaller dose and larger dose, smaller droplet and larger droplet. So we see there is a variation between the bioavailability. So this is a dissolution profile between the two different doses as well as within each dose there are large variation. Whereas if we perform the monitoring and control the solidification or crystallization process by implementing feedback uh, control approaches to control the 2D distribution of the temperature uh, on the 2D surface to uh, make sure that the oil droplets solidify according to the appropriate uh, temperature variation, we can uh, uh, eliminate within those as well as between those variations significantly. So with this, we can practically now go into really incorporating in our manufacturing process the mathematical model of, the, uh, of what the drug does in the human body. So we are working on developing uh, for pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamic models by practically looking at the certain step that the drug uh, um, uh, follows in the body uh, and simulating the human body as a chemical uh, process, right? We have feed uh, preparation reactor uh, systems uh, in, the, uh, in the stomach and small and large intestine. We have base minimization, we have separation uh, sec uh, sections. Uh, each of these are typical chemical engineering operations, which is the appropriate uh, mathematical model and uh, parameter estimation uh, using a central, using a multi compartmental modeling can lead us to start optimizing what is the appropriate. Uh, drug regimen, whether we need to uh, provide a certain uh, medication every eight hours, every 12 hours, or we need to uh, tailor now the amount of API in these uh, dosages for uh, a particular uh, uh, patient to enable uh, personalization uh, uh, in the context of now printing the right dose uh, with the right uh, optimized um, uh, regimen can uh, uh, practically also enable the circular supply chain in the uh, context of pharmaceutical uh, 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 manufacturing, which leads to minimization of uh, waste generation uh, and the environmental impact that pharmaceutical manufacturing typically, uh, uh, or centralized pharmaceutical manufacturing typically brings. So with this, I'd just like to summarize my uh, presentation by uh, mentioning that I really wanted to bring in a couple of examples how digital design and advanced control may, can open new opportunities for agile, modular, reconfigurable, intensified, and robust end-to-end -end optimal pharmaceutical manufacturing. Of course, continuous manufacturing and novel integrated uh, processes or process intensification uh, are the enabling technologies to uh, uh, enable uh, uh, smart manufacturing in the context of pharmaceutical uh, uh, products. Uh, and this also enables to uh, the implementation of distributed manufacturing uh, uh, frameworks where uh, we can now uh, also use personalization and patient-centered drug manufacturing and regimen optimization 
uh, which can lead to circular pharmaceutical supply chain. Digitalization via the use of process and the technologies, modeling, optimization, and control can shorten the drug development and therefore can decrease the cost, bring, uh, bring higher societal impact, making new drugs available faster and at a lower cost. So with this, I'd like to thank for uh, your attention and um, I'm, uh, I, I finished my presentation here. Thank you.